Hey guys, it's Stanford here with First Updates Now, and today I'm with Team 3476, Code Orange, and we're going to be running through their incredible robot. We're going to be showing off their claw, their wrist, their arm, and their elevator. And here to help me talk about that, we've got Conneth, Micah, John, and Varun. And stay tuned for their incredible robot on another episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. All right, so first we're gonna highlight this very, really, really incredible claw that you guys have. So how to help me talk about that is John. Okay, so uh, we first have a claw mechanism currently, uh, which uh, overlaps itself when fully closed. And this is so that we can hold cubes and cones at the same time. And we also have these polyurethane uh, pieces over here to help with grip and this Ninja Flex tip to help. Uh, we're using chains on the inside and the outside to uh, Actuate these with a Neo motor and a 20 to 1 uh, gearbox. We used to have a grabber mechanism with wheels, but the wheels weren't really helping much, so we decided to change to a uh, claw mechanism. Uh, we also have a proximity sensor right here, and that helps us automatically grab cones and cubes at the same time. Uh, and then we also have the wrist, which can actuate the, uh, sorry, it can actuate and uh, rotate this up and down so that we can uh, easily pick up cones that are knocked down as well. We have a 25 to 1 Neo motor that is completely running this with a chain. And yeah. So um, when we started to design the arm, we wanted to make sure that the arm was precise, so we chose this belt system so that we knew exactly where, what our extension position would, would be. Um, and another thing is that we wanted to make sure that it was lightweight so that we wouldn't have as much bending or force on the elevator. So we made sure to um, do heavy pocketing on the tubes and also um, we used 3D printed bearing blocks instead of metal on both the top and on the inside of the tube. So that makes sure that um, we were uh, lightweight. Um, and another thing is that we wanted to make sure that it was fast. So that's where the belt system really came, um, came in. So we power using a Neo with a four to one gear reduction and we're, it allows us to extend and retract in 0.75 seconds. So um, yeah. Next thing we're gonna talk about on this robot is the wrist that actually helps move their claw around. So uh, we covered this a little bit earlier, but um, it's driven by a 25 to 1 uh, ratio, uh, driven by a Neo. Uh, we're able to drive it. The special thing about this is it's actually driven straight off of the uh, intake, so, and then the static portion of it is on the arm. Um, yeah, uh, we have a static shaft that's attached to the sprockets, and then it's driven straight from the uh, intake itself. All right, really cool. And then the last thing we're going to highlight on this robot is uh, the elevator that's responsible for moving this whole thing up and down. So you help me talk about that is over here. Uh, so yeah, we have uh, a normal. Uh, so we use the great elevator uh, bearing blocks. Um, it's driven by two neos at a five to one reduction. Um, it's driven by twenty five chain, and uh, yeah, we can travel up uh, forty two inches in less than a second. Um, in the back, you can see this uh, C clamp sort of thing. Um, it is for retaining the elevator tubes at its nominal position. Uh, if you look at the inside of the tubes, unfortunately, we've had some issues where the arm carriage has popped out. So we had to retain these elevator tubes um, in this way. All right, really cool. And if we could get a scoring demonstration of this, that would be um, incredible. 
And if anyone wants to run through the programming as well, that'd be. All right, here we go, Varun. So one thing we really wanted to ensure on the programming side of things is that this robot was as easy as possible to drive for the driver. So over here on our button panel, we have a three by three grid, which represents um, which node in each grid that we want in to score at. So um, for for our auto, so we have auto alignment using these the Intel D, um, D455 depth camera. So we use that. We're currently we're only using it to detect April tags, but in the future. We'd like to start using depth to detect cones on the field and automatically plan routes to um, go and pick them up. So currently, we're localizing with April tags only, and we're using a um, mini PC over here that's running custom vision code. So um, with all that information, we get tracking at 30 FPS, and we have our um, pose estimation is extremely rock solid. Like even at the center of the field, looking at tags all the way in the scoring areas, we get about we're still accurate to about 10 centimeters. And then inside the scoring area, we're accurate to like less than a centimeter almost. So uh, if we wanna, so the way this grid system over here works is that we select a position and it controls the auto driving target. And if we wanna go up to that selected position, um, we have to, currently we have to press a button on our stick right now, but normally this is driver controlled and it's, um, and it uses the pose estimation to know whether it needs to go to the scoring pickup location or the um, station pickup location on the opposite side of the field. So we're doing, we're implying a lot of um, the information that we need to, um, that we need for, to, to control the mechanism to ensure that, um, to, to just make it as easy as possible for the driver. So we can have multiple actions bounded to one button that's depending on where the robot is. And then we're also predicting which node that we want the driver to go to based on um, based on um, where the robot's, the robot's velocity and position so that, that we don't have to explicitly determine which grid position. So now we're gonna just showcase some of our robots, um, our auto pickup and everything. So I go to our pickup position and we place like a cone. The notice it auto grabs it and then automatically closes. So this is like part of the, another thing that we did to make things really easy. So the driver, all they need to do is deploy the mechanism and the robot will take care of it. So if we go into cube mode, and then also go into pickup again, and then all of that um, happens automatically. So what's really cool is that all the operator needs to do is select the specified scoring position, and then we automatically determine how much pressure that we need to hold the game piece with, um, the selected position, and everything. So I can show off some of our other positions as well. So if we go to scoring, this is our high score, uh, middle scoring, I mean and then I let go, and then what's really cool here is as soon as I let go of the bumper on the controller, we automatically close as well. So we also have our low scoring, and just over there, and then the controls are consistent throughout. So um, we also have 18 different aut autos that we um, run. So we have a three cone auto, and then a two cone balance auto, and we have this for both the bump side and the um, for and the scoring position side as well. So over here, this is our two cone balance auto over, that we have, and then for our three cone auto, we have this over here. So this is our auto builder. This is our custom tool that we've made and shown a bunch of times on Fun for each auto. All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, Code Orange have been absolutely incredible here at the 2023 Orange County Regional. Definitely going to be a team to look out for the rest of the competition season. So thank you guys and good luck at the rest of the competition. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos.
Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.